I've had many requests for the EAP650 Outdoor for quite some time now, and I've been pestering TP-Link to send one over, and they have finally sent it. So now we're gonna take a look at how it compares to the EAP610 Outdoor, and also see where they contrast. But first, a word from our sponsor. Oviu and their magnetic RGBA LED bars can provide four hours of continuous light, are rechargeable, optionally motion sensitive, and can be mounted anywhere thanks to the magnetic mounting brackets. They are available in white and black, single or in three packs. Oviu produces computer mounts, technology brackets, gaming kits, and organizational solutions for home offices, commercial spaces, and more, with every mount being 100% manufactured in the USA. One of the first things I noticed on the box is this claims that it can support up to 2,402 megabytes per second on the five gigahertz band which I don't really understand how that's possible considering this is a gigabit device. So if someone out there that's more knowledgeable than I am could explain that in the comments, that would be great. Let's first take a look at what's in the box with the EAP650 so we can get a better understanding of everything that it comes with. Starting from the left, we have the included power cord, 48 volt passive PoE injector with a mounting plate and screws, then the mounting bracket and a waterproofing kit. The EAP650 and the 610 are damn near identical. I don't see any differences on the exterior of these two except for the print on the rear. The 610 has a darker print than the EAP650. Not sure why that is. I wonder if something changed or maybe that this is a one-off thing. Not entirely sure, but maybe there are some differences on the interior. So let's go ahead and take a look to see if there are any differences in the antenna design between these two. Immediately upon opening this, it looks like the EAP650 has an additional antenna added here and here where the EAP610 does not. So I think immediately this is gonna give us more range and probably some additional capabilities. Otherwise, there doesn't appear to be a difference at all between the two. They are pretty much in the same exact um, setup. However, we do have a what looks like a larger heat sink. At least it's maybe not as tall, but it is like longer. I don't know, the heat sink orientation is a little different. We do have, um, I'm guessing, some more antenna sticking out there. And we have antenna sticking out here. We have some uh, sticky pad or thermal pads protruding from there, but we don't see any thermal pads protruding on the EAP650 itself. At least none that I can see. Uh, but they are pretty close to the same design. Uh, not too, too much has changed as far as I could tell. There's probably some chipset differences. We'd have to remove the heatsink on that to take a look. And obviously the orientation has also changed. Removing that was pretty simple. Doesn't really tell us what these antenna do. These could be antenna that provide us with 160 megahertz um, frequencies or bands or whatever they're called. So anyway, that's, that's all. We just took these apart to see what the differences were. Uh, not too much as far as I can tell. Obviously, we're not doing an in-depth look, but uh, we got that out of the way. Let's go ahead and get these tested now, and then we'll talk about what the actual difference is software and hardware-wise of the two. TP-Link still hasn't included ferrous screws with the new EAP650. They aren't ferrous on the 610 either, but I just wanted to point that out because it really drives me up the wall that they don't do that. They do in some of their products, but not all of them. Uh, and also, while we're talking about some differences, I don't know if I mentioned it already or not, but these things are pretty much the exact same that even the EAP610's mounting bracket works on the 650, which is great if you wanna do an in-place upgrade, because then you can literally just remove the old, the old uh, EAP610 or the old device and then plop on the new one and you don't have to do any new mounting or anything like that. Here on the left is the EAP650 and here on the right is the 610. We're not gonna go through every single one of these, but we're just gonna kind of scroll through here and see what we could find as far as differences. And right off the bat, it doesn't look like there are too many. They both are 802.3 AT PoE. Uh, they're both also 48 volt passive. They're both one gigabit, of course. Looks like they use about the same amount of power. Of course, there's more power in the US compared to the EU. Everyone knows this. Moving on, same dimensions. They even have the same um, number of antenna. So nothing's changed there. Both IP67 rated. Do, 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 do. Uh, looks like this one's 250 to the six, whatever that means, and to delta or whatever. I don't really know what these, what this signifies. This actually means. Uh, but those are the first differences are spotted thus far. Keep going down here to signal rate. It looks like they're about the same. I do see some differences here on the AC. This seems to be a little bit higher, which I guess is good. Um, going down again even further, 
It looks like they support pretty much the same wireless functions. I don't see anything too much different, just scrolling through here. I do see a mono mesh to the third power while we have asterisks here, band steering, load balancing, rate limiting, wireless scheduling, wire scheduling, reboot schedule, beam forming. Yeah, they look pretty much the same. So who, I don't really know what's the difference between these two. I mean, obviously there's an, an additional antenna that we saw from the breakdown, but what else has changed? While I didn't specifically see it anywhere, I do know the EAP650 does support 160 megahertz channel widths, while the 610 does not. So we should see some higher bandwidth with this device. Let's check out those benchmarks. I got the EAP650 mounted at the top of the pool house right here so we can do outdoor range tests. And with where it's mounted, I think we can get a pretty good Wi-Fi connection. As much as I would like to go into the woods and do the speed test over 160 feet, I'm not gonna do that. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's like briar bush all behind me and stuff. So <laughs> trying to get back there while not terrible, uh, there's just way too much briar for me to wanna deal with, so my bad. Here are the results from the bandwidth test. Normally I'd show you a chart or a scorecard, but a scorecard wouldn't work because we were missing two whole columns here and the chart was just too bloated and I didn't like the way it looked. So on the left here, we have the EAP650 with its hardware version and firmware version. And on the right, we have the EAP610 with its hardware version and firmware version that were recorded during these tests. And then we have the different intervals all the way from 20 feet to 160 feet and download and upload speeds and megabits per spec megabits per second so of course we can see here that the ap650 seems to have the better capacity or, or or distance factor if you will where it can actually reach out to the 160 foot range with an uh, actually really good connection speed whereas the EAP610 may not even work, and if it does work, it is still pretty poor. And this is where the EAP610 really suffers. We've seen this in the standalone video where really beyond 100 feet, you're gonna struggle pretty hard to even establish a connection. One thing to keep in mind about these results is that I did all of the testing with one PC, so a single stream. Now, I did do two streams at one time during the test with an iPhone as well as a PC, and essentially just halved my bandwidth. So each device got roughly 200 or 300 megabits per second, really depending on the distance. And so, and you can expect that to happen with the more and more devices you have. So if you need more bandwidth to be available to your customers or your house or wherever it may be, you're probably gonna wanna deploy more of them. I'd be really interested to know what you guys think of these devices. Personally, I think the AP650 is probably the top pick solely because it does a much better job at the longer ranges and provides more bandwidth overall. However, the AP610, while it may not have the range, the bandwidth is at least more consistent and also it tends to be higher than the AP650 does, especially on the five gigahertz band on the 80 megahertz channeled width. So make sure you drop a comment below letting me know your thoughts on that. And with all that being said, I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.